This is Marco Wu from e p r o g r a m m e r c o m I'm going to talk about what you need to know before applying for a PhD program. Number one, why do you want to be a PhD? Now, some people think、uh, to be a PhD is very cool. Some people think the research is interesting.、Um, some people may think. Because they don't know what to do in the near future, your target is very important. Why do you want to be a PhD? In nowadays, it is not good to just only have an undergraduate bachelor degree. It would be good to have a master degree. But do you need a PhD? Number two. Will you get funded? Some school may provide funding to PhD students, so you don't need to pay for the tuition, and you also have the stipend. Now, you need to know, even you don't have to pay for the tuitions, but there are some service charge that the school may ask you to pay for it, and also your stipends. Is very low compared to what、uh, what you get if you get a job in industry. Number three, do you have a PhD advisor? You can find your advisor before you apply for your your program. That is something that you need to know. Find your advisor first, actually. Could have some advantage. Number four. Does your PhD advisor graduate all his students? Some advisors may be very bad.、Um, the student may live with a master degrees or without any degrees.、Um, most of the time, it's because、um, the advisor give you funding. They consider you work for him. They don't consider you a student. They are not going to help you. They are not going to guide you. You need to think about the professor, the advisor. They get the money in. They give you funding, and the reason is those part of funding. They cannot earn it. They cannot put it into their pocket. They have to find a student to work for him.、Um, so you are going to facing a boss, and they they are like the advisor. If it is not nice, they don't guide you. Then you could be in a big trouble. Does your PhD advisor plan to leave the school? Some advisors may actually plan to leave the school, but they still take new students. Some advisor they are not good people. Um, they have their plan, but they only consider themselves as a part of the plan. They don't consider the student as a part of the plan. So if the if your advisor leave the school, then you may not be able to graduate, and you are it, your 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 PhD program is at the middle of nowhere. If you don't know what to do, it would be a big trouble. If your research or engineering projects are falling behind, eeprogrammer.com can help you get them back on track without exploding your budget. Let us know what you need. You'll find relief here. Visit eeprogrammer dot com. We can help you. Number six. How many years does the school allow to keep a PhD student? Now, this question is like quite funny because like, why do I care how many years of like the school allow to keep a PhD student? Some school, famous school, they can. Keep student for twenty plus years without giving them PhD. In U.S., the system is 
after you get earn your bachelor degree, you can apply for a PhD program. Let's think about that. If you spend like 10 years in your PhD program and your advisor doesn't want to graduate you, what is going to happen? You are going to quit with like 10 years stay in school, no industrial experience, no other experience, and only with your bachelor degree. Are you happy with that? It would be a ping, ping, ping trouble. Very, very, very painful because you waste of like waste your life it could be 10 years now it is not joking if you do some google search you see like some phd student trying to like kill the advisor kick the advisor in the face those famous school and then they go to jail why because the, the advisor are not good the advisor doesn't want to guide them the advisor have funding or for some reason like money support them and then consider them as a slave so that could happen number seven what can you do if you finish your phd in your field students think they can become professor easily but it is not the truth the key reason is that in the past 10 20 years there are more and more phd students and at the same time there is not too many new university opening now so what it finally happened is the student get uh, graduate with a, PhD, with a phd 40 years ago they may directly become a professor 20 years ago they may need to finish two postdoc or one postdoc to be a advisor to be a professor Nowadays, they may need to finish two postdocs and also they need to have the funding themselves to self-support in order to be able to become professor. So what that means is you need to bring, you at the end, you need to like stay longer and longer as a postdoc. At the same time, you need to bring money into the college in order to become a professor. Number eight, what if your degree does not work out? you could easily spend two to five years and could not graduate now after you spend like let's say four years in your in your research are you willing to give up that four year uh, or are you going to spend another four year w what are you going to do so if it doesn't work out after four years what are you going to do can you look for other job what kind of job can you get? You at that point, you are you are maybe like 25, 30 years old, and without any industrial experience, just like a fresh grad, um, with a bachelor degree. So, what are you going to do if it doesn't work out? If your research or engineering projects are falling behind. EEprogrammer.com can help you get them back on track without exploding your budget. Let us know what you need. You'll find relief here. Visit EEprogrammer.com. We can help you. This is Marco Wu from EEprogrammer.com. I'm going to talk about what should you do before applying a PhD program. Number one, find an advisor. The reason we want to find an advisor at the beginning because advisor may have funding for you, so you don't have to worry about money. It, uh, they may also have they like, uh, provide you the tuition fees, provide you the stipends. Advisor may help you to avoid the GRE requirement. There are some school that GRE requirement is very high, but some of the cases is if the advisor like you they will talk to the committee and avoid the GRE requirement number two found non-teacher reference now you should find one to two non-teacher reference for example the manager of your current job now why do you want to find non-teacher reference think about a hundred application there are 99 of the application Submit school teacher, 
uh, from the college uh, professor. Those weapons showed you the ability of coursework, but it doesn't show you your personality. So non-teacher reference is quite important. Number three, research your advisor. You may want to visit the lab, ask your potential lab mates whether your potential advisor is a good person. It is critically important before you join their lab, you are a guest. They will treat you as a guest. But what happens after you join their lab? Think about at that point, they will become your boss. The professor will still be so nice to you. Number four, research your school. Check how many years that allow a professor can keep a PhD student without graduating them. The key reason is this. There are many top universities in the US. For example, Harvard. Those universities allow professors to keep a student for a very long time. It may be 20 years. Would you want to be a PhD student for 20 years? In that period of time, if you quit, you, you didn't graduate with a PhD. So you don't have any bargaining power. So it may be better for you to find a university that allow a professor can keep your student for relatively short time. Some of the school allow only like six to seven years. Some of them can up to 20 years. I hope this information will help you. If your research or engineering projects are falling behind, eeprogrammer.com can help you get them back on track without exploding your budget. Let us know what you need. You'll find relief here. Visit eeprogrammer.com. We can help you.